So it comprises of two parts, the ball and then the handle. And what we're going to do is carve the ball, carve the handle, and then we're going to make a joint on the end of the handle and it's going to slot in tightly there. First of all, we can just draw on our rim. So we're going to go just less than a centimetre all the way around. Doesn't need to be perfect at this stage. And then when you come to, this is going to be where the handle slots in this hole here. When you come to that bit, we need to keep our distance just so it doesn't get too thin when we put the handle in it would break. So I normally put a little mark there and then just try and blend it in like this. It's coming in the way. Grain orientation for the cuts with the knife you need to think about. So on this one might be different on yours but you can see the grain is running across this way. So that means we can, to make it easy, you can divide uh, any ball shaped thing um, up into segments. So we can divide it in the middle like that. And we can also divide it into quarters. And then what this means is um, we can cut um, in a few different directions, but essentially for the smoothest cuts, you're going to go this direction and that way. In that way. See I'm going from a halfway a halfway point to that other halfway point there. So that's the sort of direction you're going to be cutting. You can also, um, to remove a lot of material, which is normally what I do first, is uh, go like across the grain either way. It's a quicker cut quite often but um, it's not quite as neat. So you could go that way or that way, you know, to get rid of most of this material. And then you might want to do these cuts, these uh, from the end bits here. Um, but you will need to check the grain orientation for your um, Japanese ladle. If it's if the grain orientation was rather than that way, was that way, then you'd need to just check that. So look back at previous videos if you're not too sure what I mean about that. I don't want to cover it in this one. Trying to get a bit of this oval shape, which the ladle is. So this is just roughing out stage, very messy, not very neat, doesn't need to be at this stage at all, so don't need to take your time on it and make it look too neat. You can just get it all hollowed out, get that shape going. Of course, if you had a gouge and you could clamp this, it would be a lot quicker. But this is for people who might just not have that set up and just have a spoon knife. So just get that material roughed out. Another different cut you can do is, uh, which I really like is, so this one, one I was just doing was like this, sort of this sort of action. And um, the other one is turn it the other way and you can push, which is really nice. Because we're carving inside a bowl, um, you've got these walls here, it's it's really quite a safe action this, you know, the walls protect you quite often from the knife coming out and jumping too much. So you can put quite a bit more power into it than if you were doing something like a, a spoon for example.
Remember to keep checking the thickness at the bottom. Um, you don't want to go too thin, obviously, and put a hole in so you can hold it up against the light and uh, check to see if there's light coming through. It's always a little good trick to do. You can see I'm largely going across the grain. Just want to get rid of that mass of material. That's pretty much at the depth that I'm after now. Um, I wouldn't want to go too much deeper than that. It's like slightly curved. So what I'll start doing now is just uh, taking taking a bit more from uh, this inner bit here, taking up that, that rim line that we've just drawn in. So at this stage, I might just do a little bit more going across the grain, and then I'm going to uh, start to go with the grain a bit more. So remember those arrows that I drew down, so now when I'm doing the end bits I'm going to start coming from this halfway point and doing this, that sort of direction there. Um, and then for, from, for the other side here, I'll come this way here. So that was that bit there, now I'm just going to try and do this. So I'm going to turn it around a bit and then I'm going to do a bit of a guided thumb push, so thumb on the back of the blade. This is a bit more tricky for me, being right handed. But you can sort of do it. Thumb sort of stays in place for this one, it's like a thumb, just like a lever, a pivot point. Now you can see at this stage there's still a bit of a drill mark there where the drill went quite close to the side so I want to get rid of that because it doesn't look very neat. So let's just take away that bit. You want to always try and get rid of any drill marks that are left because there's a, a chance that, because it's an indent in the wood, it could cause a weakness and cause it to actually split once it's drying or once it's in use. So yeah, just try and, try and get rid of them drill marks. Okay, so that's sort of not looking 
too bad now um, just roughing it out of the stage remember it's green woodworking so we'd go over it again once it's dried and just neaten it up a bit so just trying to get rid of the mass of material get that all hollowed out nicely um, it's going to do the same to this side but you don't need to see that twice okay so that's both sides done you, you can go down the grain like this to tidy it up here yeah, I'm just got the thumb on the back of the blade and we can just go down the full length get quite a tidy finish okay so now we've removed a lot of material we've got this nice thin edge so it's much easier to take a carving knife and just get this all tidy this top edge uh, let's see if you can look at it this way it's still pretty rough from where it was split uh, so we're just gonna take the knife get it all tidy so I'm gonna start from here and just literally like planing the wood across the top and I quite like this cup for doing the the rim the top rim of the cup is just thumb placed on the back of the blade and levering it like this and it's a really controlled cut like that And you can also do the chest lever as well, which is a really good one for this. Or the chicken cut, as I call it. And just keep checking to make sure it's fairly flat. You can see on this one here, there's like a little chunk taken out of that there. So for me, I, I like to get rid of that because it just looks a bit messy, which might mean lowering the whole depth uh, of the of the ladle. But it does look better in the long term, I think. Like that. And then what I'll do is I'll just blend that depth in. I think it looks a bit neater. Little chunk just come off there. Not ideal, but not a problem. It's natural material, it's wood. It's what happens sometimes. Um, we'll just work with it. And that would have just been a little fracture in, in the wood here. Um, the knife's just pushed it off. Uh, just one of those things that happens. It's always good not to panic when these things happen because you can generally do something with it, work around it a little bit. Okay, I think that's all right for now. Okay, so now we've done most of the hollowing, we can now match these angles that we've created on the inside with a spoon knife on the outside because it's still pretty blocky so there's a lot of chunk here a lot of material and we don't want that we want these walls of the ladle bowl to be pretty thin you know this sort of thickness less less than a centimeter you don't want them to be too chunky because it will just be heavy and it won't cut through the food too well so what we're going to do is just start working on the outside with a straight knife now and we're just going to start to remove a good chunk of material now what i quite like doing for this um to make it a bit quicker is so if the grain's running this direction um i like just taking off big strips of wood going down here first um so going down along with the grain getting the right thickness, the right angles, going right down the length, whatever I can get. And then uh, what I like doing is rounding over the ends uh, as like a last bit. And for me, it just makes it a little bit more symmetrical. So I'm gonna first of all, take this front edge off right here. So I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna take the knife and go right down here. My pencil's falling to bits. 
right down there, take a big chunk off and then do the same on some bits here. Um, remember just to be aware of uh, the handle hole here. So it's been drilled about to that depth. So remember not to take too much off here so that a hole appears. Um, so just you can just what you can do is just be aware of the depth. So there's my depth there. You can put the pencil here and you can just mark on where the bottom of your drill hole is. And these uh, the drill holes for these are sort of going at a little bit of an angle. So that that is where our handle is going to fit just there. So it's quite handy to draw this on the side because then you know you can remove some material around this at this stage and not, not have any danger of, of going into there. So we're going to do the chicken cut or chest lever as some boring people call it. And we're going to just take off this big chunk first. So a lot of material to remove here so we need a nice big powerful cut. So I'm holding it like this. Got to be quite strong here. Remember, always be aware of the tip of the knife at this part of the hand. That's a danger area. And just checking the thickness as I'm going. Still a lot of thickness on there. getting a lot better. You can see sort of the angle we've created. We're trying to match this inside angle, remember, on the outside. And it's amazing how your fingers, uh, when you pinch like this, or act as a natural pair of calipers, biological calipers, you can really tell uh, the thickness. You can tell it's much thicker there than here, for example. Um, so that's a nice fairly nice thickness for me at this stage. I might just blend in this high spot here, round it a little bit, not too much though. So you can see now this nice profile. It's like more or less a 45 degree angle. Okay, so now I've done that. What I'm gonna do is just take off a little bit down here, not too much though, because remember we've got our uh, drill hole going here, but I can take off like a little bit like that at least um, and then I'll start to take some off the ends you can see what I've done here so I've I'm still keeping a bit of distance here between where I think the drill hole is going to be um, so I'll leave it there 
and now what I can do is start to remove some material from the end so again we're going to try and match this inside angle going down here on the outside there's a good bit of uh, wood to remove and this can be quite a good point to um, you can just do the chest lever the, the chicken grip um, if you want or you can place it on a chopping block and push down and get a lot of force into it so I think that's what I'll do for this stage so be careful you don't wrap your knuckles on the side of the block so it's quite nice to place it a bit more on the edge and um, you can see my legs are quite splayed here so if the knife does slip it just goes into space um, which is quite important so we can just do this get rid of a lot of material so because we're chopping the end grain here it is harder to do than doing the sides which is why I do quite like using the chopping block for this part and again just keep feeling that thickness so I can see I've done one side there I didn't, uh, if you notice, I didn't tackle that full broad side there. It's just, it's too much wood for a knife to be easy, unless you're Hercules. So I've tackled one side, I'm going to do the other side, and it'll leave a nice thin bit of wood, a manageable piece of wood. Can you see I'm, I'm trying to round over, continue this facet, this angle we first created down the side, all the way around, trying to blend it in. That's feeling okay there. So now you can see I'm left with this little bit here, which I can tackle. course you can do this just on a normal uh, kitchen chopping block you don't need a log with legs um, you can just have it on a kitchen chopping block put it on uh, the edge of a table or something like that make sure it's sturdy so that is more or less there there you go I don't know if you can see the light coming through that there So if you can get a little bit of that light through, a little bit of that orange glow, I mean that's the, the perfect thickness that we're after. And I'll just do the same on the other side. Now we've done most of the bowl is just try and thin down the, the part that's going to hold the handle. Um, just get it a little bit thinner, it's a bit, still a little bit too chunky for my liking. Uh, so I'm just using the tip of the knife. I'm just going to try and get rid of a bit of material. Essentially we're trying to remove as much material and as much wood as possible without putting a hole into it. If you do put a hole in it, don't worry, you've just got a spoon with a hole, a, dra a strainer spoon, not such a big deal, very useful. At this stage, I would more or less leave it to dry. 
and then I would go on to the finishing cut so I might just go over the inside with the spoon gouge again um, and just neaten a few little things up uh, tidying it up so your cuts when it's dry you're going to leave that nice sort of smooth finish and I would also then do a little bit more of the rim so the rim wants to be nice and thin so um, what I would then do after it's dried, which will just take a, three days for example, uh, I'll just take a bit off the outside of the rim. You can also take a bit off the inside as well, but the aim is just to get a nice thin rim so it cuts through the food quite easily. So what we can do, we can do this sort of cut like this. You can see when I'm doing this cut, it's this sort of action, closing the hand. And you can also see, notice the blade is above my thumb. So if I, if it comes through the cut, you know the, the blade isn't going to get my, my thumb. It's really important that that's what's going to happen. So then I'll just carry around this whole rim, getting it nice and thin like this. Um, and that's exactly what you want. You don't want a big thick rim on it because it just won't go through the food. It will hold, hold on to the food when it's when you're trying to serve thing, something and grab, grab it. It won't look very nice. So we want this to be as thin as you dare to go. And best to do when it's dry and these cuts will leave a really nice smooth finish. Um, so I'm just going to carry on all the way around here and get this nice and nice and thin. Okay, so um, we are going to fit the handle into the bowl via a mortise and tenon, mortise being the hole, tenon being the sticky bit, and it fits in there. However, the handle wood is still green, so if we carved it now to fit really snugly in there, it would shrink and it wouldn't leave a nice tight fit. So we need to carve both of these pieces, we need to let them dry, and then we just need to um, finish the tenon off to get a nice tight fit once it's dried and then it won't shrink too much. So we can first of all think about um, the depth of the hole. So I just put a pencil to the bottom, put my thumb up against it. There's the depth of the hole there. So we can now, this that's the depth of our tenon, what it needs to be. We can put that depth on the handle and just mark there is our depth there. Like that. So this is going to be our tenon. So we'll keep that fairly chunky because we will and then we'll carve it down to be a really tight fit. But that's our our length that we need. So for me what I'm, I like to put a nice bit of a curve in it. So that's going to be our tenon and I'm just going to take the pencil. You can do whatever shape handle you want, but essentially for me, I'm going to go something along the lines. Might do it that way. I think I'm going to go this way. Just a slight curve. like this. Remember, I'm going to keep the tenon pretty chunky so you can just hold it up against the mortise and make sure it's a little bit bigger than that hole for now. And 
and I quite like a nice thin handle on mine but as I say you can do whatever you want you might take that a bit it's a bit too steep that curve I might bring it in a little bit okay that's gonna be my handle you can see this is gonna be the, the tenon and this is all gonna get removed like this you could have a straight handle if you wanted to keep it simple this is definitely a little bit more complicated um, so the first thing we're going to do um, is just shape all this down so remember the green direction is going this way so we can put our lowest point mark so there's our lowest point let's turn it this way remember always carve downhill so there's the top of the hill there's the bottom of the hill so you have to carve this way to get a smooth cut same on this side, carve that way like that. And then if we turn it around, for carving this, we gotta go downhill again there, and downhill again there. Okay, let's start carving. So before I take away this center bit, the, the belly, I'm just gonna thin this down a bit and it'll make getting rid of this, they're doing this awkward bit, a uh, bit easier. So I'm just going to do some big long cuts down here and just get that dimension down. So remember again, um, with the tenon, we need to mark on the thickness of the tenon on the end just to make sure we don't go less than the tenon. So there we go. So there's the side thickness of the tenon, what we marked on before. And there is, we've just marked another line on here, so I know if I carve down here, that's all good. And just backwards and forwards. And then it eventually just starts to come away. But it's pretty physical, pretty hard going uh, to begin with until those cuts meet up. that's a little curve in it there as I say if you don't want to put a curve in no problem you don't have to and I think what I'll do I'll just curve this down to the bottom a little bit more like that So that's got my curve in there so I would personally be tempted to leave that now now you've got your rough shape you've got there your enough uh, wood on the end the right thickness for the tenon I would be tempted to more or less leave that until it dries and then do all the finishing cuts when it's dry so leave that you know um, perhaps a week or so make sure there's no moisture coming out of it anymore and then you can uh, we'll work on it to fix the tenon and finish the whole handle in a one Okay, so let's just go in with the thumb push. Take a bit off and just hold it up against it. Just keep checking. That's all we're going to do. It doesn't look too bad. Remember as well, we want the same thickness all the way down 
to this point here. So you don't want just the right thickness at the end and then not there because it just won't fit all the way in. And that's looking not too bad. I'll leave a little bit of excess on there. And then what I'll do is I'll just take some off sides as well. What we're going to need to do is mark on the the width of our hole and this would have changed this because this was drilled when it was green it uh, would have dried and it's probably more of an oval shape now so you're going to need to do like a, a custom fit essentially for this it'll be more or less round but slightly oval so we can just essentially hold our handle up against the hole and then we can just mark on the diameter of the hole on the handle as a square. So we're going to mark it on to get the right diameters that way and then that way as a square. And then we know we've got the right di diameters and then we can round over the edges. Uh, and I find that's the best way to make something fairly accurately round. So we can see now we've got our square and it's more or less the right diameter both ways to fit that hole. So now we've done that we can just take off the four corners and then each corner of those four corners until we've got a circle and it should fit fairly tight. So once you've got those off you can try it and then you might need to take off a little bit more. But it should be looking okay. There we go. So once we know the tenon fits, then we can actually uh, shape the handle, blend it into that tenon, make it look nice and neat. So for this, I'm just going to thin it a little bit more. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to take off the sharp corners, obviously. We'll just keep it fairly plain and simple, but you can do what you like, obviously. And I'm just going just gonna to take some nice long cuts, just taking these edges off. I'm trying to keep a little bit of like a shoulder on the tenon so it, it widens just towards the end of where the mortise hole would be so it does give it an, a bit of a tight fit. You don't want it to go too wide here though because if you try and force in the tenon um, it could break uh, the, the ladle. So just going to do some nice uh, long cuts, cut towards myself. off these edges like this and then we'll do the same here take off these sharp edges so from so we're able to go this way on the inside but on the outside remember thinking about the grain we've got to go that direction so we're going to do the, the chicken cut and when you're going towards the tenon just be really careful you don't take off too much of the tenon it's really easy to do actually at this stage 
and then it might make a such a tight fit. Sometimes that thumb push is just, just a little bit safer when you're closer towards that tenon. And then I think I'll just flatten this a little bit more. Okay, so when you've got the handle as tidy as you want it, then we can go to fitting it. So we essentially, we, we need to glue uh, the tenon first. I like using epoxy because it flexes a little bit and it's really, really strong, but you could use wood glue um, but if you don't want to go out and buy some wood glue and you've got some super glue around the house that probably would still do uh, so you'd literally just coat all around the tenon and the bottom and um, perhaps a bit inside as well and then you're just gonna essentially get it to fit and we're just gonna twist it slightly as it moves in and you don't want to do any sideways movement because you could very easily break the ladle. So be really, really gentle at the stage. So it's just a twisting movement until you feel it not going any further. And then lining it up, making sure it's all, all good. And there we go. One Japanese ladle. And obviously with uh, these both these components should be dry now. I was still finishing the handle off while it was green just for the sake of the video, so it would leave a much smoother finish than this. Um, but once it's all it's dry and you'll be putting it together, then uh, get it oiled and you can use whatever oil you like, Danish oil, linseed oil, walnut oil if you've got that in the kitchen and it's good to go.